So um, again, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to this talk, uh, to give this talk at this uh, conference. Um, I didn't know I was going to be in the myeloma section, so I'll try to put a few words in about myeloma because I think this is technology that will very soon, uh, has already and will very soon be more prominently uh, demonstrated in the, uh, uh, in the setting of myeloma. So first, as a uh, conflict of interest, uh, we uh, generated or we are co-founders of Juno Therapeutics, which allows us to do phase two clinical trials. Um, I'm a stockholder as well as I get some research funding from, uh, from Juno. So a T cell can be genetically modified to recognize a cancer cell through the introduction of a gene that encodes for a Frankenstein-like molecule that we call a chimeric antigen receptor, which is part antibody, which recognizes your target antigen, and uh, part uh, T cell receptor. This approach allows for a T cell that would otherwise not recognize or otherwise ignore uh, a tumor cell to now recognize a particular antigen on the surface of the tumor cell, and once it does so through the expression and binding of this chimeric receptor to this target antigen, will allow the T cell to uh, eradicate the tumor. This is an application of adoptive cell therapy that has multiple advantages. First, it is, allows for independent, HLA independent recognition of uh, the target antigen because the chimeric receptor recognizes uh, tumor, the same, uh, tumor antigen the same way that a monoclonal antibody would, and therefore it is universally applicable. The introduction of this receptor into both CD4 and CD8 cells, helper cells as well as cytotoxic cells, um, uh, is uh, readily feasible. And in this day and age with uh, uh, SCFV, humanized SCFV phase display libraries, you can generate uh, uh, chimeric antigen receptors to virtually any target on the surface, including proteins, carbohydrates, and glycolipids. We can, generally, we can generate these uh, tumor-specific T cells quite rapidly, usually uh, under GMP conditions in uh, 7 to 12 days. Um, because in general, we do this in the autologous setting, um, there's minimal risk for autoimmunity or graft-versus-host disease. And given the fact that this is a living drug, ideally a single infusion of these T cells should allow for expansion, persistence, um, and uh, eradication of disease. So it's a single treatment uh, in its most ideal form. The target that we went after um, uh, many moons ago was the uh, CD19 antigen, which is not expressed on stem cells uh, in the bone marrow. Therefore, it does not carry the risk of developing bone marrow aplasias. What it does carry the risk of is developing B cell aplasias, since it's one of the earliest B cell markers that is expressed uh, as uh, B cells uh, differentiate uh, into mature B cells. What it additionally does is it expresses on most B cell malignancies, including acute lymphoblastic leukemias, chronic lymphocytic leukemias, and non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. Even a small subset of myelomas express <clears throat> the CD19 antigen, and um, as Carl June recently published with some uh, controversy, uh, it may be expressed on the uh, myeloma stem cells as well, a very low, small fraction of myeloma cells that can be identified. This is a slide that represents uh, about five years of my life. It's the uh, further development of the uh, CAR design. So initial uh, chimeric receptors contained only a single uh, signaling domain, which was the CD3 zeta chain, which is part of the T cell receptor. But as, what is well known to immunologists is that these uh, T cells for proper activation and proliferation, they require a second or a co-stimulatory signal. And that's usually provided through co-stimulatory receptors such as CD28 and 41BB or uh, OX40. And so what we and others have done, had done, is we further modified the uh, uh, chimeric antigen receptor to express these co-stimulatory signaling domains within the chimeric receptor itself, allowing for two signals, not, not just the TCR signal through the zeta chain, but an additional co-stimulatory signal through uh, one of the uh, cytoplasmic signaling domains of the co-stimulatory receptors. Um, additional work by, uh, by our group and others have made third-generation receptors, but in general, which contain two co-stimulatory domains, but in general, it's the second-generation receptors that have been used in the clinic to date. Um, as you can see here in a uh, preclinical mouse model, when you treat uh, tumor-bearing mice that, uh, in this case, um, express, in this case, carry NALM6 tumors of pre-B cell ALL. The second generation chimeric receptors demonstrated superior in vivo anti-tumor efficacy when compared to the first generation, and that's the reason why we uh, chose to move forward with the uh, second generation CAR into the clinic. 
So a lot of the good news and a lot of the uh, notoriety for this technology comes out of data that was generated uh, in patients with relapsed B-cell ALL. And I will initially show you our experience uh, with that uh, and then briefly uh, update um, you on uh, similarly impressive data, uh, both at University of Pennsylvania um, as well as the NCI. So in our phase one clinical trial, we actually treated adult pre-B-cell ALL patients, and these patients had to have either chemotherapy refractory or relapsed disease, and as uh, all of you here no doubt know, the prognosis with relapsed uh, B-cell ALL uh, in adults is quite dismal. Um, patients that actually relapsed after an allogeneic stem cell transplant, assuming that they didn't have any uh, significant graft-versus-host disease ongoing at the time of presentation were also eligible for treatment. Um, uh, patients with active CNS disease, uh, graft-versus-host disease, uh, or uh, cardiac disease were, uh, were listed as being um, ineligible for enrollment. The study design was uh, relatively straightforward. We would collect, patients would come to us, we would collect their uh, T cells by a leukophoresis procedure. While the T cells are being produced in our GMP facility, the patients underwent salvage chemotherapy. The uh, regimen would be dependent on what they had previously received prior to uh, coming to our uh, uh, attention. The patients then, prior to uh, CAR T cell infusion, underwent a, a lumbar puncture with lumbar puncture to assess for CNS disease as well as a bone marrow biopsy. The patients were. Um, were conditioned with uh, cyclophosphamide for two days prior to infusion of the CAR T cells. Um, the patients were treated regardless of how they responded to salvage chemotherapy, and therefore they did not have to achieve a second complete remission to be eligible. The subsequent to CAR T cell infusion, the patients were assessed, and if eligible, they would uh, be offered a, a, a bone marrow, allogenic bone marrow transplant, which is the standard of care uh, for adults with relapse disease. The first five patients you can see here we published a couple years ago now. These are patients that had either MRD positive disease or had mo overt morphologic disease, 60 to 70 percent blast in the marrow. Um, by deep sequencing analysis for the malignant clone, as you can see here in this column, all five of five patients uh, achieved a deep uh, uh, remission status with no, with no, uh, uh, with no detectable uh, tumor by deep sequencing analysis. The bone marrow of these two particular patients with 60 to 70 percent blast can be seen here in the pre-treatment setting. Soon after uh, CAR T cell infusion, you can see these bone marrows contain no more tumor cells, it's just stromal cells and is largely an empty bone marrow. And by two months after treatment, you can see the heterogeneous pattern of the bone marrow suggestive of a complete remission. Um, th these first five patients obviously were exciting, but what's more relevant in this setting is if you can repeat it, and as of uh, the um, ASCO meeting this year, we treated 39 patients with re relapse and refractory disease, um, 38 of which were, were valuable for response uh, 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 with a greater than one month follow-up. As you can see here, these are the characteristics of the patients that we treated. They're predominantly males. The uh, a relatively uh, a broad uh, range of ages with the highest uh, uh, age being a 74-year-old. Um, and the patients that had minimal residual disease at, at treatment were a little less than half, while patients that had overt morphologic evidence of disease uh, also made up half of the population of treated patients. Um, we're up to 74, 75 patients treated uh, to date. Um, the uh, patients were heavily pretreated, as you can see in this, uh, 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 in this next slide, and a significant number, about a third, a little more than a third, had actually relapsed after an allogeneic stem cell transplant. And again, as I pointed out earlier, if they had no evidence of graft-versus-host disease, these patients were eligible for, uh, uh, for treatment on this protocol. A significant number, about a third of the patients, were uh, Philadelphia chromosome positive, uh, which really had no impact on uh, the overall response rate which uh, you will see in the next slide. So overall, our complete remission rate was 87% after uh, treating 38 patients. Um, of that, uh, the number of patients that were MRD negative was quite the majority at 81%, um, with the median time uh, to complete remission of those patients being about 23 days. As you can see here by subgroups, uh, the uh, patients with morphologic disease as well as minimal residual disease uh, seem to have similar uh, relatively similar outcomes. The numbers are still quite small. 
uh, post-transplant patients also seem to do uh, about as well as the patients that did not have a prior stem cell transplant. Philadelphia chromosome status, again, had no uh, obvious uh, bearing um, currently uh, um, on the outcome of pa uh, the patients, nor does age appear to be a significant uh, deterrent to uh, achieving a complete remission. Um, so, uh, in, in summary, the, the median follow-up, 5.6 months. Um, one patient is now well out three, more, greater than three years, going on four years out from, from treatment. Um, the uh, relapse-free survival is uh, 5.3 months. Um, and uh, of the patients that uh, were treated, 11 of our patients went on to a stem cell transplant. 14 patients did follow, uh, relapse following, uh, during follow-up. We had three relapses post-transplant, two of which um, emerged with a CD19 negative clone. This is uh, potentially a predictable um, uh, limitation of this technology that the, the, the tumor may, um, uh, through antigen escape, um, overcome uh, CAR T cell uh, eradication. Um, Ten patients uh, relapsed uh, that had no prior uh, stem cell transplant. You can see here, this is again relatively early. The numbers are relatively small, but you can see that the patients um, that had MRD negative disease uh, after treatment uh, seemed to do, not statistically, but seemed to do about as well as patients, uh, as the overall uh, complete cohort of patients that we treated. And again, um, prior uh, allergen, patients that did receive a transplant after a stem cell. Uh, uh, allogeneic stem cell, after CAR T cell therapy, uh, seem to do about as well as those that have not received uh, a stem cell transplant. So this patient population right here are the ones that are currently being followed expectantly. And it's going to be important to see how these two survival curves diverge or remain tight with respect to our recommendation whether patients should receive a subsequent uh, stem cell transplant. Um, there is uh, the, the T cell uh, expansion and persistence was noted. Roughly, uh, we could note expansion at one to two weeks after infusion, and we could detect cells by deep sequencing analysis for about three months out from T cell infusion. Um, this is not a uh, benign therapy. Their cytokine relief syndrome was, was, has been described both, both at our center as well as others. That is a, a triad of fever, hypotension, and respiratory insufficiency, and oftentimes, this does require ICU uh, management. Neurologic changes have also been noted that include delirium, global encephalopathy, aphasia, and seizure-like activities. All of these complications can be managed and are fully reversible to date in our experience. Um, of the patients that we have treated, uh, it is those patients that, um, have, uh, uh, that have overt disease that are at risk for uh, severe cytokine release syndrome. Uh, the neurologic toxicities are a little bit more difficult to predict. Um, uh, as noted here. So um, as you can see here, this is what we previously published. Patients that have minimal residual disease when they receive the CAR T cells are the patients that don't develop uh, cytokine release syndrome. While it's almost quite predictable that patients that have anything greater than 5% blast in the bone marrow at the time of treatment, uh, that these are the patients that will develop some evidence of uh, this cytokine release uh, syndrome. Management of cytokine release syndrome to date initially started out with giving high-dose steroids, which we did on in our initial patients. You can see they represented by the red arrows. However, high-dose steroids quickly, uh, being lymphotoxic, they quickly ablate the, uh, uh, the CAR T cells as can be detected in the bone marrow. Um, data from uh, University of Pennsylvania, uh, where, we give tos where they gave tosilumumab, a IL-6 receptor blockade, um, allowed for uh, uh, reversal of cytokine release syndrome. Um, symptoms. Um, and as you can see here, as we got more efficient with it, we could give tosilumumab with persistence of the CAR T cells further out. And so the algorithm that we now use is tosilumumab as initial uh, treatment for the cytokine release syndrome. And if that, uh, if the release syndrome is refractory, we then initiate uh, high dose steroids. So here's the summary, but in, for the sake of time. The interesting thing about um, the data that we had was that uh, it doesn't appear to be a regional phenomenon, which is to say that subsequent to our first report uh, de demonstrating the response to uh, ALL by, with CAR T cell therapy, um, a similar uh, protocol was, uh, uh, a paper was published by, this pa uh, by investigators at the University of Pennsylvania where they took pediatric as well as adult patients with relapsed disease. These are predominantly pediatric patients. Uh, 
The design of the chimeric receptor was slightly different than that uh, that we published. And at the 30 patient uh, mark, which uh, they've no doubt now passed, uh, there was a 90% complete remission rate with event-free survival at 67% at six months and overall survival um, at 78% uh, at six months. So similarly uh, exciting and promising data. And not to be outdone, the uh, investigators at the NCI taking a, a similar car design as the one that we have utilized. Uh, again, predominantly treated, predominantly pediatric and young adult patients and on an intent to treat could demonstrate a 70% complete remission rate um, with a five-month uh, event-free survival at 78% in MRD-negative patients. And so this is uh, significant in the fact that this is, it's not just a one-center phenomenon, and it appears that this type of therapy can travel, um, being that uh, three different centers now have uh, exhibited uh, similar, similar data, and we expect further uh, data based on abstracts uh, recently submitted or uh, recently presented that uh, similar data should be coming out of other centers that uh, use uh, this CAR-19 uh, therapy. However, while the data is extremely exciting in uh, ALL, uh, the data in other uh, B-cell malignancies tends to be somewhat more limited. Uh, initially, early studies with CAR T cells at the NCI reported uh, a patient with relapsed follicular lymphoma achieving a partial remission. This goes back to 2010. And a follow-up paper a year later uh, evaluated um, uh, that same patient with the seven uh, additional patients with uh, B cell malignancies, mostly low-grade malignancies, where the overall complete remission rate was one out of eight with partial remissions with four out of eight patients, which was promising, but certainly not as exciting as the data that was published in ALL. In a subsequent paper, a uh, follow-up paper by uh, Dr. Kotchendorfer and the NCI uh, looked at 15 patients with relapsed B-cell uh, lymphomas, including diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, CLL, and low-grade uh, lymphomas. Um, the design of the chimeric receptor was, again, the same one that we utilized in 1928 Zeta design. And overall, 8 of 15 were reported to be CRs uh, morphologically, uh, 4 of 7 diffuse large B-cell lymphomas, one of which relapsed subsequently, and 3 of 4 CLL patients um, um, report, were reported to have uh, complete remissions. Now, the big news uh, initially was data coming from the University of Pennsylvania, where the first three patients with CLL uh, were reported uh, and treated with uh, the CAR T-cell therapy, and two of them um, were complete remissions that are now, I think, ongoing for almost four years now, and one patient had a partial remission that lasted for seven months. And this was very exciting data um, and certainly uh, caused, drew a lot of attention to the University of Pennsylvania and that group and their studies. However, subsequent uh, reports uh, in an abstract form from ASH back in 2013, um, this was recently uh, uh, reported um, in uh, uh, Science Translational Medicine, um, is that the uh, CR rate was uh, more modest when more patients were treated at 21% and um, the partial remission was 36 percent, uh, with overall no response uh, being seen in 43 percent of uh, treated patients. Um, in a uh, similar abstract that same year, they looked at patients at a dose escalation trial. Again, there the overall response rate, both CRs plus partial remissions, was 40 percent. Again, far more modest than what we had seen uh, in the ALL uh, setting. We ourselves published uh, back in 2011 our results of the first uh, eight patients that we treated with CLL, uh, demonstrating that three patients had no response uh, to treatment if they didn't, weren't given prior conditioning chemotherapy, while additional patients either had stable disease or, in one case, a significant uh, regression in uh, peripheral lymphadenopathy. We therefore looked to see if we could move this therapy up to the fr frontline setting, so we treated, we opened up a second uh, clinical trial where we treated uh, previously untreated CLL patients with PCR chemotherapy for six cycles. Those patients that had either a partial uh, remission or MRD positive disease underwent leukophoresis and were given CAR T cells. Those that achieved an MRD negative uh, complete remission were not treated, stable disease or progressive disease was not treated either. And as you can see here, the seven patients that had been treated on this protocol, uh, four of the patients actually went from a, uh, a partial remission after uh, the chemotherapy to a complete remission following, uh, uh, following CAR T cell uh, infusion. The time follow-up time for these patients is still relatively short, but suggests that the CAR T cells may function better in low-level disease states. Um, in a similar, uh, in a, another trial that we're conducting at uh, uh, 
uh, Sloan Kettering right now, where Craig Sauter is the, the PI. Um, we uh, take a look at uh, CAR T cells in the post-ablative chemotherapy setting prior to uh, 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 autologous stem cell transplant, and you can see that um, the uh, idea here is that we can get rid of, we can modulate the tumor microenvironment in the post-transplant setting, and so uh, that these patients, I'll have to go through this a little bit more quickly, I apologize. So the mechanism is that these patients will be, have, be, uh, have their T cells collected, they will undergo uh, 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 beam conditioning followed by stem cell transplant, and two days thereafter, the patients will be infused with the CAR T, cell, uh, uh, CAR -T cells, um, and then the patients are followed out expectantly. The primary objective is to assess the safety, of course, but the secondary objective is to look at progression-free survival as well as modified CAR T cell persistence. And as you can see here, these are the first 11 patients that we have treated. The uh, two in red had dose-limiting toxicities, uh, which were generally neurotoxicities. Um, but overall, we were able to demonstrate uh, four long-standing complete remissions. Um, there was one uh, non-treatment-related death, uh, as you can see in patient eight, that was therefore not evaluable. The summary from this study is that uh, we are, that this treatment is safe at five times 10 to the sixth uh, CAR T cells per kilogram. Um, patients did uh, uh, experience some cytokine release syndrome and CNS toxicity. But overall, four of the 10 evaluable patients that are high risk patients for, for relapse remain progression free. Uh, the latest, uh, uh, the furthest out is now uh, over two years for the first two patients that remain in CR. Um, this is similar to studies that were done uh, in, in lymphoma in patients with uh, 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 CAR T cells um, at the NCI, where they're post-transplant patients. Um, they reported on 10 of these patients. Grade uh, 0 or 1 graft-versus-host disease was tolerated, not those that had active graft-versus-host disease. Donor T cells were obtained. They were treated, uh, modified to express the chimeric receptor and they were given a single infusion uh, of these donor T cells. Overall, it was well tolerated, three partial remissions, and one patient with CLL achieved a complete remission with no evidence of graft-versus-host disease, likely due to the fact that they were pre-selected for not having any graft-versus-host disease during the transplant. So my conclusions, which are two minutes late, um, is that there is mar marked uh, anti-tumor efficacy in CD19-targeted T cells, it is most prominent in ALL. It's less prominent in other diseases like low-grade malignancies. The etiology um, of this uh, difference in response still needs to be figured out. It may have something to do with the tumor microenvironment or the location of the disease where the T cells may prefer um, pro and proliferate better in the bone marrow than, for example, uh, in the lymph nodes. It may also be a question of whether these T cells can penetrate into peripheral lymph nodes as opposed to the more vascular bone marrow. These questions still need to be answered, and we need to keep a close eye on it, but it's also very clear that additional evaluation and modification of these CAR T cells to the next generation of CAR T cells will be necessary. Now, uh, in honor of the fact that this is the myeloma session, I apologize, I will point out that a paper was published recently by Carl June in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was a case report of a single patient um, with uh, relapsed multiple myeloma that was given a second dose of melphalan followed by the CAR T cells. Um, on the uh, assumption that a small subpopulation of uh, 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 myeloma stem cells express CD19, 0.05 percent, and therefore uh, they were able to demonstrate, at least in one patient, um, uh, in one of nine, I think, uh, a long-term uh, remission uh, of disease. Um, additionally, um, the patients, uh, the, the group at the NCI is looking into targeting BCMA as uh, a part of a myeloma protocol. Uh, we are similarly looking, looking at that antigen uh, as well as several others to modify our CAR T cells uh, to address myeloma, which in fact may be more amenable because it does share some, uh, some characteristics to ALL uh, with regard to uh, if, the, if the disease is predominantly in the bone marrow. Anyway, so that's uh, still up and coming. There's a lot of people that I need to thank for all of this work. In red are the, are, the, are the folks that have been very responsible for moving the clinical trials uh, forward to where it is right now. Um, and that's it. Thank you.